Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 170. Please turn to page 170, the second problem, problem number 127. In problem 127, the problem itself is not difficult. You just have to pay attention to the wording. It's worded in a very strange way. You just have to make sure you understand what they're talking about. Here, here we are told that we have x, some number x. That's not x, is it? That's not x, and all of a sudden my marker is dying. We're given some number x, and we are told that that quantity x, whatever that is, we are told that that quantity lies between 3 and 100. It has to be less than 100, and it has to be greater than, one, uh, greater than 300. The question simply is, for how many values of x is the third of the x which they show here as x over 3 and, and don't read this as x over 3 read it the way I wrote it here it makes it easier to understand for how many values of x is the third of the x which they say x over 3 it, the square of a prime number one more time, we're going to read it. For how many values of x is the third of the x a square of a prime number? It should not say the square, it should say a square of a prime number. Number 100 and... If x is between 3 and 100, for how many values of x is the third of the x the square of a prime number? You see? For how many values of x is the third of the x a square of a prime number? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Let's first list our prime numbers. Here's our solution. Let's list our prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, so on and so forth. The square of a prime number, the square of the prime number would be 4, 9, 25, 49, and 121, and so on and so forth. And this square of the prime number, okay, listen very carefully, it's just a matter of understanding the wording. The rest of the, uh, the problem itself is very simple. This square of the prime number that we just calculated, the square of the prime number, has to be the third of the x. For how many values of x is the third of the x a square of a prime number? So this has to be the third of the x. If, this, if these numbers represent third of the x, 4 is a third of the x, 9 is a third of the x, 29 is a third of the x, then that implies that x must be, x must be, 4 times 3, 9 times 3, 25 times 3, 49 times 3, and so on and so forth. Well, this is 12, this is 27, this is 75, and what about this guy? We don't have to worry about that guy, because that's more than 100. We have to, we have to stay in this limit. Within this range, between 3 and 100, okay, listen carefully, between this, it's within this range, between 3 and 100, how many numbers qualify as a, how many numbers are such that listen, listen how many numbers are such that if you were to take a third of that number if I were to take the third of this number it will turn out to be a square of a prime number 12 is one such number if I were to take a third of it a third of 12 is 4 and 4 turns out to be a square of a prime number namely 2 there is another one 27 is another number that qualifies 27, 27 is such a number, 27 is one such number where if we were to take a third of 27, 
If we want to take a third of it, we end up with a 9. And 9 is the square of a prime number. 75 is another one. 75 is another such number where if you were to take a third of 75, we get 25, which is a prime, which, which is a square of a prime number. And that is it. There are no other numbers. Because the next one would be 49 times 3, which, was, which is going to fall outside the range. So the answer is 3. The answer is 3. There are three such numbers where if you were to take a third of that number, it will turn out to be a square of a prime number. That's all. Like I told you, it's a very simple problem. You just have to understand the wordings. Number 128. Next one. That's it. We're done with it. I'll give you a second here to do whatever it is that you want to do. Number 128. In number 128, we are told that we have to use the least number of letters, least number of letters that we can to identify twelve people. What are the restrictions? Are there any restrictions? The restrictions are uh, we can use uh, using a single letter or we can use a pair of letters. But if we were to use a pair of letters, a pair of distinct letters, it's not a pair of letters, it's a pair of distinct letters. That's, that's a condition. In other words, we cannot use A, 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 A would not qualify as a pair because it's not a dis these are not distinct letters. They have to be distinct letters and, and they have to be in in alphabetical order. I can't write alphabetical in alphabetical order. Those are the conditions we have to fulfill. We can use either a single letter or we can use two letters. If we were to use two letters, they have to be put in alphabetical order and there has to be a distinct number. We can't repeat letters. Let's find out, shall we? We're done with this part, so I'm going to raise it. Let's see how many people we can identify with just two letters. If we just had two letters, A and B, how many people we can identify? With A and B, we can identify three people. Why three people? I can identify one person with letter A, I can identify a second person with letter B, and I can, I, we can identify a third person with letter AB. With only three people, we have 12 people, we need more than two. Let's try three, let's try three letters. If we have three letters, A, B, and C, we can identify one person with letter A, another one with B, another one with C. Then we can use our pairs, we can use letter AB to identify the fourth person, we can use letter AC to identify the fifth person and we can better use BC to identify the sixth person. But that's not enough. We have 12 people. We need more than that. Let's try four. A, B, C, and D. With A, B, C, and D, we'll have A, B, C, D as four people and then we'll have our AB, we'll have our AC, we'll have our AD, we'll have our BC, We'll have our CD, uh, sorry, BD, and finally we'll have our CD. So that's six so far. Six plus the single letter, that's four, that's ten. We can identify ten people with four letters. Four is the, with four letters, the maximum number that we can identify, maximum number of people that I can assign an identification with using the letters so is ten. We have twelve people, therefore we need five, five letters. We need, we need minimum of five letters. We don't have to waste our time actually to figure out what's the maximum we can identify or what's the maximum number of people we can identify with five letters because that's not what they're asking here. They're simply asking what's the minimum number of letters that we need to identify 12 people. The answer is the minimum number of letters that we need to identify 12 people 
is 5 because 4 is you can see it's clearly not enough 4 will only identify 10 people A, B, C, D, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D and C, D only 10 people, I need to identify 2 more people so obviously we need one more letter the answer is 5 alright I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.